badgers here have been demonised by an industrial farming lobby hell-bent on making the taxpayer pay for their criminality and animal cruelty. I want to tell you the story about how badgers have been demonised because yet again we're seeing government proposals that are going to see landowners able to slaughter badgers on their own land. And for 40 years we've seen the same story repeated in the media again and again. And it's dogma. For 40 years the media has been telling us that badgers are responsible for TB in cows. And it's been repeated that many times that there are many people, many farmers, country people, um, people who work in the government, who now think that badgers are responsible for TB and cattle. And that is wrong. It is a mistruth. And there's three myths that the, the, industrial, lobby, the industrial farming lobby are peddling. There's the myth that the badgers are giving TB to cattle when there's no scientific proof of that at all. There's the myth that farming is, is, you know, it's a nice occupation whereby you've got a few cows on a beautiful pasture and there's just a, couple, a nice little family farm. It, well, that's not what modern farming landscape is today. Oh no, it's very much different to that. And then there's the myth that people like myself are bunny huggers. And all we care about is wildlife and we don't know the real issues going on. Well, I can tell you that's not true. Because science is telling us what's going on. Good science. We need to look at why the myth that badgers are causing TB is peddled so much by lobby groups, the National Farmers Union, countryside landowners associations, all these people. Why do they perpetrate this myth? Why? Who, who benefits from the, the, the demonization of the badger? And we also need to look at the science behind badgers and TB. And science tells us a lot about tuberculosis. If we look at the incidence of tuberculosis in cows, it mirrors many other diseases and they've increased at the same rate, they're correlated. And TB is just a small proportion of the deaths of cows. There are many other diseases that kill. And so why have all these diseases been increasing? Well, it's got nothing to do with the badgers and everything to do with farming practices. The idea that cows live on a pasture is long gone. We have huge farms where the cows can live in, in cattle uh, yards from six to nine months in the year, living in their own filth. And we have to use lots of antibiotics for this. So we have industrial farming where the cows are stressed. They're, they're, they're pushed to the limits of endurance. These poor animals are so stressed that they're more susceptible to disease. And so many cows are dying. And many cows have got horrible problems associated with their living conditions, of which TB is one. TB is passed from breath-to-breath -breath contact, mostly. Um, probably 90 to 95% of TB is transferred from cattle to cattle. And then you've got badgers, which, yeah, badgers get TB from cattle, but there's no proven link to show that TB is given by badgers to cattle. There is proven link the other way around. But it's not, but so are lots of other animals. You've got rats, you've got mice, you've got birds. They can all transfer TB. So why single out badgers? What is it with the collective psyche of so many people? that they want to single out badgers. And that's when we, we look at the, the economic reasons why people are targeting badgers, because there's, a, there's an economic reason. There's £100 million a year 
up for grabs. 52 million going in compensation payments to farmers and the rest going to scientists and civil servants. And there's a whole industry involved with badgers and TB. And a lot of the scientific research and the compensation payments are based on the idea that badgers, because society doesn't want to kill badgers, I don't want to kill badgers, and many people don't want to kill badgers, we have to somehow compensate farmers. So the more that they blame the, the, the poor badger, the more they receive compensation payments. And they don't have to pay for the increasing um, animal cruelty that they're perpetrating on the cows on their farms. So we've got illegality, we've got criminality of some farmers being proven are transferring ear tags to allow cattle with um, TB to be transferred from farm to farm and into the few human food chain. We've got um, farmers increasing the density and, and lowering the standards of animal welfare on farms over time that causes the increase in disease. And they are getting the taxpayer, us taxpayer, to fund um, their, their wrongdoing. We are rewarding the very people, the criminals and bad farming practices that create these diseases. So I think that's one of the reasons. The other thing we've got to look at is, is, is all the people who really benefit. Follow the money, as the old axiom. Follow the money. Who benefits from all these government subsidies? And if you do follow the money and you understand economics and, and what's called Ricardo's law, one of the key laws of economics, you'll see that it is actually rents of land and landowners who benefit from farm subsidies and the payments made if, if you get problems with cows because they benefit from the increasing productivity of cows, the milk they produce, the meat they produce, and they benefit from the government subsidies. And the other person who benefits is the whole food chain right up to the supermarkets where the, the, the value chain of how the cows go to market. And all these people are benefit from the taxpayer funding to pay for the problems caused by their industry but they get the benefits of selling milk and meat at cheaper prices and having a higher profit margin on that because they're causing all these problems to cows. What's the humane way of solving the farming and badger conundrum? Well, economically speaking, the best way is to take the rents of land as the source of government revenue, and that will allow land to be used properly for farming, where good farmers are rewarded and bad landowners are penalised. So the government needs to stop giving out subsidies to landowners and start taking their revenue from the rents of land. And that will mean a lot more people can work on farms. We can farm at lower densities with less cows per acre, and we can enjoy better food that reflects the real price of its production.